vote tonight. We give it a 10 second and then give it a whack and off we go. Okay. Right, we're going to do it. Good evening and welcome to the January 27, 2014 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Carol, would you take the roll, please? Ms. Auglis? Here. Mr. Buffard? Here. Mr. DuPont? Here. Mr. Fellows? Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Paul? Here. Uh, before I start this evening with our first item on the agenda, it is my pleasure to welcome back Susan Auglis. Um, for those of you who may not know, Susan... Um, <coughs> has been on this board before. In fact, she termed out a few years back after spending nine years with us. She was very instrumental in the development of the design standards that we still use today. Um, she has made a lots of contributions to the community on various committees, and we are very lucky to have her back. So welcome back, Susan. Thank you very much. Looking forward to working with you again. Thank you. Um, our first item on the agenda this evening is the approval of minutes of January 6, 2014. I move to approve. Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, excuse me. Before we vote, where we do have a missing voting member this evening, our first alternate will be voting, and that is Nick McGee. So, Nick, you are a voting member this evening. Okay. So, all in favor of approval of the minutes? I see that to be <coughs> unanimous. Thank you. Our next item this evening, item number four, Woods Eds, Scarborough LLC, requests a site plan review for 12-lot subdivision off Ash Swamp Road. Mr. Chase. Sure, Mr. Chairman, would you like to make note of the Griffin Road application? I would love to make note of the Griffin Road application. Thank you. After I wrote it down and told you I'd forget to do this. Um, item number six this evening, Griffin Road Development LLC has been tabled at the request of the applicant. Thank, Thank you. you. You're true to your word and you forgot, as you said. I told you, you I would. Much. All right. Um, let's see. As Chairman just mentioned, this is a sketch plan uh, review of a 12-lot residential subdivision. Um, the property is between Holmes Road and Ash Swamp Road, right near the scarborough Saco uh, border. This site may be familiar to one or three board members. Uh, there was a preliminary subdivision uh, that came through on this site back in the 0809 time frame. It did receive a preliminary approval, um, but ultimately went no further than that. Um, and that has since expired, and, and now the site is back before the board. Um, and so, um, sort of as as um, as I mentioned, the site is in the is, a, is on the west side of town in the RF district, um, and given the characteristics of the site is required to go through a, a conservation subdivision design layout. Um, so the applicable ordinances apply there, as well as the subdivision ordinance and the street acceptance ordinance. Um, essentially, without having benefit of a net residential calculation or a conventional subdivision layout, staffs really um, kept our comments to, to the plans that have been provided to the board, um, but certainly those elements are are critical elements in the application moving forward to be sure that they have the um, both the net residential area to have 12 lots as well as um, could potentially lay out a conventional layout um, uh, that could uh, accommodate 12 lots. With that, a couple of the items that staff identified is, uh, has to do with questions about the open space and the wetlands uh, set back there too. Um, also, given that the former subdivision is now five, six years in the rears, wondering 
weren't, wasn't sure the, um, how long ago the wetlands inventory might have been accomplished and if that's still relevant or if that's an item that the board may uh, want to seek uh, updating on. Um, given the scale of development, and as the board has typically been considering doing recently, might consider uh, a discussion with the board regarding road width, maybe uh, potentially considering something a uh, little uh, reduced from our typical 24-foot road standard. Um, I guess the last item I'll mention is in considering the open space design, just you know, recognizing that most of the wetlands, uh, most of the open space is designed for wetlands preservation. Also understand that there is a um, significant cultural element on the site in regards to a, a former cemetery. Um, just want to be sure that that's recognized through this process. And, um, and with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you for the board's consideration. Thank you, Jay. <coughs> Mr. Allen, good evening. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, Lee Allen, Northeast Civil Sol Solutions, um, joined tonight by the owners and, and their representatives in, in the second row here. Um, wanted to let you know this was last before the board as Caddisfly Knoll subdivision, which was a nine lot subdivision with its access off of Holmes Road. <coughs> uh, that application, I, I don't recall if it ever got preliminary subdivision approval. I don't believe it did, but we did receive DEP approval. And just wanted to point out that that DEP approval covered uh, stormwater and uh, wetland impact to the tune of somewhere in the neighborhood of 22,300 square feet of wetland fill, the majority of that fill being the access from Holmes Road into the site. Um, we were fortunate enough to pick up the parcel that was remaining. It's about a five and a half acre parcel um, that has frontage on Ash Swamp Road. Uh, we're now proposing a 12-lot subdivision with access off of Ash Swamp Road. Um, with right now, we're looking at about 9,600 square feet of wetland impact, which is obviously significantly reduced from, from the former plan. <coughs> Lots uh, are proposed to be served by well and septic. Um, test pits have not yet been done, but obviously that's something we need to do before we come back before the board. Um, we anticipate um, underground electric utilities serving the site. The wetlands, um, the five and a half acre parcel <coughs> adjacent to Ash Swamp Road, wetlands were delineated in fall of 2013. Um, my research indicates that the Wetlands on the remainder, the, the piece that we previously done, were delineated in the summer of 2008. Um, as Jay and I had a discussion today, um, the property line <coughs> on those nine lots is currently shown immediately adjacent to the wetlands. Um, by your ordinance, that isn't allowed. I don't know how we missed it the first time through, but there needs to be a 25-foot buffer from the edge of the wetlands to the property line. <coughs> And that's something we know we need to go back to the drawing board and address. The previous subdivision did propose a 22-foot wide road. As Jay had mentioned, I think that's something that we would be looking for um, going forward, as that helps um, mitigate stormwater, reduce the amount of stormwater runoff. Um, and as Jay mentioned, there, there is an existing cemetery on the site. Um, we'll definitely be working with the police department to allow access to that, as, as was requested. And as far as fire suppression goes, we had proposed some fire tanks near just across the crossing from Holmes Road. Um, it was mentioned that it would probably make sense to move those more centrally located, and that's definitely something that we would be prepared to do. Uh, with that, I'd be more than happy to turn it back to you for any questions. All right. Thank you, Lee. Um, can I start with you this evening? Sure. Um, a few things, Lee. One, uh, at the outset, uh, Jay mentioned uh, the uh, density count. Uh, yep. I didn't hear you mention whether that is correct, that was taken into account, or, or how does it we ha stand it? We haven't done it. We really just looked to see if this would fit, to, to see if it, where we were going moving forward. That's obviously something we'll do. Um, I feel confident that we had more than we had almost enough for 10 lots previously. 
Um, so I feel pretty confident with the amount of upland we're gaining with that additional five and a half acre lot that we'll um, be able to accomplish that. Are the owners the same owners that were here previously? No, no these are new owners. That's what I thought. Okay, so that's, a, that's important to me. Okay. Um, <coughs> next, uh, the, the DEP study, is that an old one? Is it a new one? Does it carry over education? It, it does not. The, the DEP permits that we received last time have expired and are, are not valid any longer. So, so you, you have to go off the new ones? We, we have to go back okay. for new ones, yes. Okay. I just, I, again, I wasn't yep. quite clear with that. Um, um, I don't have a problem right now. I'm not going to give a final approval of the 22 feet that, that right. we've given exceptions to that before. Um, the cemetery, as Jay noted and as you replied, is an important issue uh, and needs to be coordinated with the police department. Um, and uh, the fire department, according to the notes that Jay gave us, uh, want the uh, fire tank installed closer to the intersection of the, mm -hmm. of the two, two segments. So we're aware of that. Um, other than that, um, at this stage, I don't have any other uh, questions, so I'm done. Thanks, Ron. John? I'm here. I'm good. You're good? Thank you, Ron. Dave? Thank you. Um, so there is a possibility, once you figure out the conventional design, uh, there is a possibility that uh, you won't have this many lots? That is correct. <clears throat> uh, but you think you're close? I think so. Okay. Uh, where, <coughs> where is that cemetery? Is that an old family cemetery? Yeah, when our surveyors were out there, they had found some headstones and stuff that, you know, there's definite evidence that there was something there at one time. Yeah. And that, the road coming off Ash Swamp, that's an existing uh, driveway at the moment? Correct, it's an existing driveway. Okay. Um, so un unfortunately, widening that, you're going you're gonna to run into a little bit of wetland. That's correct. Uh, and the other end is going through wetland from off of Holmes Road? Th th that access will no longer be used. So that was about 16,000 square feet of wetland impact we had proposed before that we we're taking off, off the table, so to speak. Oh, you are? <coughs> so there will be one, one so, entrance? Yep, one entrance oh, okay. just off of Ash Swamp. And, and with a, with a, uh, a T um, at the end? Yes. Okay. Okay, I... I uh, Misunderstood that. Okay. Uh, I guess that's all I have for now. Thanks. All right, thanks, Dave. Nick? I'm all set over here. <clears throat> all set? Yep. Susan? It's been a while. It has. I think you were here the last time we were here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that's not possible. <laughs> I don't believe you. Um, refresh me. <coughs> Obviously, there will be, when you come back, <clears throat> the 25-foot, uh, 25-foot? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no disturb will be shown. Having not been out there, is it really wet between the end of these lots and what's going to be the open space? In other words... Is it, it was classified as wetland, and I think there's varying degrees of right. wet, wetness as you are. I'm always concerned when we have wetlands in the middle to make sure that the lots themselves somehow don't encroach out onto the wetland, which of course is what the setback is primarily right. for. I think that's when we... So the setback would have a lot of buffering already there? The buffering exists because of the nature of the yes. land? Yes. We don't have to worry about creating buffering is what I guess I'm Correct. Yeah, at. it's it's all forested right now. Okay. Okay, good. So we just it's, we just will have a no disturb, don't cut down. Correct. <clears throat> Um, oh, I had another question. What was it? On this map over here, what's the red square that is off the entrance from Rash? Yeah, what is that's, that? That's an existing house. But it's but that it's going to be put on that whole lot, which is going to remain. We kind of built this. Okay, lot but it will become lot eleven. Correct. But they will, but the house will be 
already there. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else? There's one other thing I had. Oh. So, if when looking at this, down at the end where the <coughs> where it, <coughs> you have your uh, T, it's two-pronged, right? It goes left and right. No, I'm sorry. Down where it, where it used to impact, uh, enter to exit to go to Holmes Road. Yeah. Okay. So we've got that two of them. Yeah. I can't quite figure out. Never mind. It's not important. When you come back, it'll it'll all be taken care of. I'm sure. Yeah. I like the idea of this is a classic example of making it 22 feet. Um. I guess that's it. I'm just looking to waiting to see what it's going to look like when we get the the buffering in. Mm -hmm. That's my my primary concern is always saving the, you know protecting the wetlands. Great. Great. That's it. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I think the big thing here is to because we're trying to go into basically a conservation subdivision here. We need to at least take a peek at a conventional layout. Oh, loop. absolutely. So I yep. know I. Figured you're probably going to be getting ready to do that, because um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, that is one of the key factors in determining: is it eight, is it nine, is it eleven? Correct. What What are we going to do? So, uh, I'll be interested in looking and seeing that. <clears throat> um, on the piece of property, which I'm assuming, I, I don't. I'm assuming it's owned. I'm assuming it's not an easement. Which went out to Holmes Road. That was right that away. That was that all original, part of the piece. Right. Uh, is there is there any thought of since you're not going to develop it as such, um, and it I'm assuming that it's abutted on either side by a different owner. Mm -hmm. Is there any thought about donating that land to the town, or I'm just haven't hasn't even crossed anyone's mind till now I, I'm just I'm I'm envisioning it's a potential access way we really don't want to see an access way there because of the wetland right situation so if there was a way to protect that piece of property so that it couldn't be filled whether it's I don't know how it gets done but it would be kind of nice to protect that little small piece can't build on it anyway so let's not build it out and take the wetland out of there. Um, just a thought. Um, <clears throat> is there any way to handle that turnaround on, I'll call it the north side of the lot, so it's, it's, it's near that piece of property, again, heading out to Holmes Road? Mm -hmm. Is there any way to do that and not have a wetland impact there? Can you move that at all? Potentially. I mean, what we try to do with this plan was try to keep as much as what we had designed from before yep. with the comments now knowing that we've got to change some stuff around I think that you know gives us a clean slate to start looking at this the reason we didn't go the other way is that area across the way from that was where one of the wet ponds for stormwater treatment was located okay um, but now with us kind of looking at this thing from scratch you know we, we may change our thinking on that altogether all right. Well, if, you know, I'm just trying to again trying to protect what 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 we can yep. protect if we can. Uh, any idea of the length of that road? Yeah, from the T to Ashwamp Road is about 500, 550 feet. <laughs> well within the. And then the the length of road that it tees into is about um, 11, 1200 feet. 2000 feet. 2000 feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, In terms of the wetlands, do you have any idea when the last wetland study was done? <coughs> yeah, for, for the piece, the original piece here, that was 2008. Okay. And for the piece, the five and a half acres that butts Ashlump, it was fall of 2013. Okay. All right, so that's not way old then. It's not too bad. <coughs> All right. Um, I know that you're going to come back with some wetland setbacks, et cetera, and you're going to be making sure there are no wetlands on any private property, correct? I knew you would say yes. <laughs> I just had that feeling. 
think that we've you been might, down that road before. <laughs> that, that you might try to do that. Um, the net res calc, we talked about that. I, I think for now that's that's what I've got on my list for um, for where we're at, and obviously we, you'll come back with all of the studies and yep one second Susan, uh, in terms of the studies with where we're going to put septic systems and all the test pits and all the other wonderful good things that we need to have right yep so we look forward to that and Susan um, educate me on how long how long that original wetland study is good for it was done in 2008 is it just there's forever? no sort of set timeline there is I, I staff flagged the question because <coughs> you know if it was pushing 10 years old maybe the board might want to consider redelineating at least that edge of the wetland that maybe abut these properties okay. um that's i think there's been a recent application uh, where there was an 07 wetland study that the board seemed generally comfortable with accepting. It. Okay. Um, I wasn't but, saying it should be done. I just right. didn't know. No, I, I think staff's <coughs> comfortable. With and that I'm assuming that this frame. wetland is such that it is not even appropriate for like passive recreation. This is just going to remain. I, I think there was some discussion before about maybe some recreational trails back there. It's not a discussion we've had as of yet, but it's definitely one we will. Okay. There's definitely okay. some more sensitive wetlands the closer you get to Merrill Brook, which is mm -hmm. part of that edge. Right, it looks just all marked. And I think when we looked at it last time, if I, if I, if I may, um, sort of public access was questionable because it really is a pocket in, in right. a whole bunch of private property. So yeah, it, I'm not even the, thinking about the public. Value. I'm just thinking about, you know, as a, a draw, if sure. you will, to people right. who are uh, thinking about a neighborhood building in benefit. here, a neighborhood right. use, yep. um, something very low impact, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, not, you wouldn't bring in any gravel or anything, but just something to yeah. look at. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. <coughs> when you were talking about the road, you're talking uh, area D, kind of moving that road a little bit to avoid that some of that 3,000 feet of wetland impact. Uh, I was talking more like area. I guess well B area B. At yeah. the end of B the boy. I guess I'd like to just toss in if it's possible to possibly move that road a little bit in, in the area D to avoid mm -hmm. that 3,000 feet also. Yeah, I don't it's, think it's really going to impact those lots that much as far as value if you move it just a few feet. It's all something that we're going to look at with pushing that property <coughs> line away from the wetlands. Mm. Okay. That's all I've got. Thank you. Okay. No good catch. Need anything okay. from us? I think we're good. Got everything you wanted. Thank you. No questions. <laughs> Not yet. We'll okay. be back. All right, great. Look forward to you. seeing you come back. Excuse me. Our next item this evening, item number five, Waterstone Retail requests a sketch plan for a 113,482 square foot rebuilding a multi-tenant project at 700 Gallery Boulevard. <coughs> Mr. Chase. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, this is another sketch plan. Uh, this lot, in addition to being 700 Gallery Boulevard, is lot seven on the approved Scarborough Boulevard subdivision. Most of our board members will likely remember this item from back in the summertime when the applicant was before you with uh, some thoughts as far as preloading recognizing that some of the surrounding properties, uh, Lowe's and Walmart most particularly, um, had quite a bit of water that needed to um, get extracted before they could start development. And so you've seen at least a rough sketch of where the buildings might be submitted, uh, might be developed, but at this point the applicant is now um, beginning the process of moving forward with a more formal application. Though again, as reference, we're still at the sketch plan level. Um, this site is within the B2 zone, and typically for development of this size, it would require, or for, of this type, it would require a plan development review process. But as we talked about before, um, when the Scarborough Gallery was approved, it was approved using, uh, utilizing the former Economic Development Overlay District, which is really the precursor to our plan development review process. 
and looking at sort of the four critical elements of plan development review, which really talk about walkability, unified architecture, open spaces, access management, I'll even say stormwater management. So um, those are really the predominant issues that were looked at through the economic development overlay as well. And so staff's estimation that this item um, can move forward through the site plan review process without having to sort of go back through the, process, the plan development review process again, given that we've sort of crossed a number of those hurdles with the board back when the original subdivision was approved. To that end, it, when staff reviewed the uh, <coughs> concepts that have been submitted, a couple of thoughts that, pop, that, that uh, we looked at that the board may wish to consider. Um, there are provisions of the ordinance that allows the board, where there's multi-tenant uh, on, on a particular site, to allow for shared parking, where it can be demonstrated that, you know, maybe the uh, minimum <coughs> requirement parking for this site, some 530-odd spaces, may not be necessary, whereby, um, you know, joint usage uh, may make sense. The board can allow for a reduction, and that may be worth a discussion. Um, Board and applicant might want to also think about, there's a couple of outbuildings, the orientation of the outbuildings. Typically, the, the B2 seeks to shield parking to the sides or rear of a site, recognizing we do have a large parking field. Board might want to think about how that could be, how the board and applicant might want to think about how buildings could be arranged to both meet that need, but also not also, uh, increase the scale of the parking maybe between the two buildings. So uh, just a, sort of a double-edged sword a little bit there, but just elements to be thinking about as we um, progress through the, through the application. Uh, staff comments also reference uh, pedestrian connections uh, through the site and from, from the public way, Gallery Boulevard, but also internal connections that were envisioned through the plan, uh, not the plan development process, but through the subdivision review process. Um, there's you know, um, there's been provisions for, for uh, to provide uh, co-access through the Walmart site for both pedestrians and, uh, and <coughs> vehicular access. Um, comments also flag uh, question about, you know, thinking about the design of the access ways onto Gallery Boulevard. Uh, it appears based on the design submitted that the that the larger of the two access ways is really at the sort of, it's the access point <clears throat> closest to Muzzy Road and comes into the side uh, at retail of what's identified as retail A, um, which sort of limits op vehicular option and may divert more traffic in front of the commercial building with a likely be a lot of pedestrian access. We're maybe trying to enhance the sort of mid block, if you will, or mid site entrance would keep traffic, you know, give traffic more options as they enter the site and, and keep some of those movements away from where we would anticipate the heavier pedestrian traffic. Um, I guess with that, Mr. Chairman, um, the applicant submitted preliminary uh, uh, architectural renderings for the board to consider. Their narrative talks a, a bit about recognizing, you know, the, the Gallery Boulevard approvals. Um, uh, they're being talked of, of consistency between this site and the surrounding sites. Obviously, a lot of those details we're building towards, so we look forward to seeing how those progress as, as we move along. Um, at this point, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jay. Ms. St. Clair, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Nancy St. Clair with St. Clair Associates. I'm here tonight on behalf of Waterstone Retail. <coughs> I have with me in the audience Frank Quigley, who is Waterstone's construction manager on this project. Uh, as Jay had mentioned, we were last before you folks on August 26th of 2013. And at that point, we were presenting to you plans for the preload and surcharge of the site, <coughs> the preparation process, if you will, uh, for the property uh, to deal with the subsoils that are on the site. There are clays on the site that do need to be uh, prepared for construction. And as part of that program, uh, what we looked at was the fact that that preload and surcharge would take about 12 months. And that hasn't changed. <laughs> uh, the information has been obtained. We put the project out to bid for that component of it. Uh, and we have the bids in, and they're <coughs> looking to 
finalize the negotiations with the bidder and could be starting construction conceivably as soon as mid-month next month. <coughs> uh, so that process will be beginning hopefully very soon. Uh, that program, as I mentioned, would take about a year uh, for the soils to be prepared. So the anticipated date for uh, this facility is actually 2015. But we're here tonight to sort of talk to you folks about the beginning of the process and the site plan review aspects of that so that we will be well prepared <coughs> once the site is ready that we can move forward to construction. As Jay mentioned, there's been a lot of background work that's been done on this site over the years. This is part of the Scarborough Gallery subdivision. It's the largest undeveloped remaining lot in the subdivision. That project was approved in 2005. It went to construction with Gallery Boulevard at that time. Lowe's was built around the same time frame. And then over the years, the other buildings have filled in. Walmart came a couple of years later. Uh, and then the restaurants and all the other uh, facilities that you see in that subdivision came on over the, the years. Lot 7 was always intended to be sort of a, a mix of mid-size retail um, to complement the two larger uh, retail buildings that are in the project. And so as part of that program, there were permits that were received at the state level uh, that anticipated <coughs> the amount of wetland impact that would be on the site. And actually, uh, there's a state permit for the, this specific lot that was included as part of the original permitting on uh, Scarborough Gallery. This lot, however, because they didn't know who was going to be the tenant, and we do need to provide architectural information, this project never received its site plan approval with you folks, although all sort of the framework and foundation uh, for that was done through the unified program, if you will, uh, under the Economic Development Overlay District. So in that program that was done for Scarborough Gallery, if you notice as you drive through there, there's some fairly sizable signs. They have some continuity to them, but they are they represent a hierarchy. The two largest signs are at the intersection with Gallery Boulevard and Payne Road and Gallery Boulevard and Muzzy Road. Those are the, the A series, if you will. Those are the biggest signs uh, as part of the project and really sort of introduce the, the fact that you're in Scarborough Gallery. <coughs> the B series are the signage that is located at the intersection of Gallery Boulevard and Spring Street. The C series are the ones that are the main signage in front of Lowe's and Walmart. The D signage is the secondary signage that is in front of Lowe's near where <coughs> truck entrance is. That's the entrance area that Jay was referring to uh, on our site near Retail A. So our entrance to the side of the site is opposite that entrance there. What I wanted to clarify with you folks is the fact that um, we do envision that our primary entrance will be at the main entrance to Lowe's, which is the next one up. It's the centrally located entrance. It is the one that we plan to have. Our hierarchy of signage will be in that C series, so that will help to focus and, and let folks know that that is where we want you to come in as, your, as the customers to the site. Unfortunately, because of the geometry of the intersection that's closest to Muzzy Road, it is wider in order to accommodate turning maneuvers. So we'll work with signage and we'll work with uh, hopefully focusing more aspects landscaping-wise on that main entrance so customers will know that that is where uh, we want them to go. We do need to have that access as it is in order to allow truck circulation. And we do want to allow customers to use that area, but there will be signage that will direct them and caution them that there are trucks um, that would be using that as well. So uh, as Jay mentioned, as part of the program, one of the comments that was received <coughs> was with regard to the amount of parking that we provide on site. We are providing the parking in accordance with the ratios required in the ordinance, um, but we'll certainly work with the applicant and their prospective tenants to see if there are options to do some shared parking or a reduction in that parking so that we don't have unnecessary spaces uh, on the site. Though that area, if you will, would be supplemented with landscaping, which would increase the internal landscaping uh, within the site as well. Uh, to the comment about the two sort of satellite buildings that are out front, uh, we'll take a look at the uh, placement of those buildings. But as you all know, uh, especially in a, in a situation where that those buildings are highly visible from all sides, 
Um, sometimes it can represent a challenge to fit all the necessary needs from one of those buildings is envisioned to be a restaurant. So you have a loading area, you have a dumpster, you have <coughs> different items that we need to, to really look closely at. Uh, but certainly we, we take those comments to heart and do understand that, you know, um, sort of acclimating those two buildings in particular closer to Gallery Boulevard is something that you folks had explored with Lot 9, uh, which is the last constructed lot uh, in that subdivision as well. So we're here tonight to talk to you folks about the plan, about the program. There's not a lot different than was contemplated back in 2005, other than fortunately the economy is changing and we're hopeful that we'll be able to uh, be building the buildings finally uh, on that. So if you folks have any questions, we're certainly here to answer them. All right. <clears throat> Thank can you, Nancy. Can I have a clarification? <clears throat> what did we approve? Just the preloading? Just the preloading. That's a, okay. Just Thank the preloading. Okay. Thank and, you. And yep. if, just, just to sort of uh, talk about that a little bit more, as board members may recall, the, the preloading wasn't really so much an approval by the board. It was when the applicant came to staff and talked about they wanted to do preloading on the site. We said, you know, it may make sense to go to the board to talk about the location of the building, to be sure that the preloading you're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> is in the location the board is ostensibly going to be comfortable with a building going. Um, so it wasn't a formal approval at that time. It was more of a heads up slash board tip of the cap. Yeah, we're, we're generally comfortable with this location because the preloading, and Nancy, correct me if I'm wrong, is generally going to take place in the area where retail A through D, the, the main building is. It's, there's not going to be so much preloading on the parking lot in the smaller building <coughs> really for that bigger building. So that, that was really what that discussion was about. Um, it wasn't a requirement. They could have sort of gone, just gone ahead, but we said, you know, it <coughs> makes a lot of sense here just to have affirmation so you don't spend a lot of time and money going down a path that ultimately isn't where the board sees it. Scope, and, so. and we were generally Okay with yep. that. Yeah, okay. Yes, I just yes that is correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you go right ahead? You're right no, the no. <laughs> go ahead. Not on the other end. <laughs> Dave? Uh, to uh, kind of follow up on Jay's comments about the two smaller buildings, uh, I, I, I do think to me, it'd be more attractive to have them closer to Gallery Boulevard and also maybe perpendicular or parallel uh, with, with Gallery Boulevard. Um, maybe that's just an aesthetic thing, but um, I, I think you mentioned in your write up that the trucks would be entering all three entrances. They're sized so that they can. That's correct. With the, um, on the, on the four, main buildings on the larger building, there are docks that have the ability to have uh, vehicles from either side. So we do need to have a two-way circulation for that. So we don't want a truck to get in there and kind of get stuck and not be able to, to get out. So they've all been designed to accommodate a truck in the anticipated maneuvers. The primary uh, truck route will be along the back and around uh, the sides of the building. That entrance that is closest <coughs> to the building to to retail A because of the term maneuver that has to, to happen with a truck is really the one that sort of ends up being larger uh, than the other ones. I see a potential uh, problem with, with large trucks coming in the main entrance and uh, being faced with uh, a lot of uh, passenger vehicles and then trying to make their way around <coughs> To the back of the larger retail buildings, um, would it would it be better to have them uh, enter at the two side entrances, uh, sort of restrict them to those two entrances instead of uh, instead of the middle entrance? Certainly, with any retail <coughs> site, the owner has the ability to manage their deliveries so that their drivers are knowledgeable of of how they. Uh, should and shouldn't maneuver through the site. Uh, that main entrance, I envisioned that if a truck came down through there, 
it would actually come to what would be the Walmart side of the property and come down that side of the building. <coughs> I agree with you if a, if a truck came in that entrance and then tried to come in near retail A along the front there, that would introduce more um, vehicular issues than would, ne would be necessary. Right. So certainly there's management of the vehicles, but we want to make sure that, you know, any large vehicle would be able to maneuver if it needed to. So that would be that would be up to them, uh, to uh, right. But I, I do understand your point <coughs> in this particular area. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like um, Lowe's uh, has sort of an alleyway that runs along Gallery Boulevard, so the traffic uh, near the store sort of empties out into that alleyway, and they can go left or right. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. An, a drive aisle that runs parallel to, or yeah, parallel to gallery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I I think that would work well with this as well, uh, to sort of you know, follow the contour of Gallery Boulevard, and have all the traffic sort of empty or dump into that alleyway, and then make their way to the entrances. Uh, I I see a potential conflict there. <clears throat> At the main entrance coming into that island with traffic trying to get out and uh, you know, from, from different directions you know what do you know what I mean no see that long island <clears throat> yeah mm -hmm. right at the end there that's if that's the main entrance that looks like you could have a lot of congestion there with traffic what we uh, envisioned at that entrance um, that's about 60 feet back from where would someone would have to stop to make a left to exit out of the site. So we figured that that would be an opportunity. We pulled it back as far as we felt would be appropriate to allow some cars to stack as they were leaving the site so to try to reduce the numbers of, of people uh, that might be coming through there. That site incorporates that sort of central drive. And that drive interconnects between what would be the main entrance to the site to the side entrance, which is the um, westerly, easterly, excuse me, entrance on Walmart side. So, um, <coughs> walk us through that, would you? Absolutely. Hope you can hear me now. Could you rotate the mic? Just try to flip that around. Maybe it can pick <coughs> you up just slightly better. How's that? Is that better? Great. Okay. Um, Gallery Boulevard frontage. This is the entrance to Walmart that is on, let's see, it would be the pharmacy side, if you will. Um, so <clears throat> all the parking for Walmart is down here. Mm -hmm. So this is the entrance that is opposite Texas Roadhouse. And Red Robin sits right here. This is the main entrance to Lowe's that comes in. So that's their primary entrance. The secondary entrance to Lowe's is over here. That's their truck entrance, and the secondary entrance is to our site is opposite of that as well. The primary entrance is opposite Lowe's primary entrance, and the secondary access again is to allow this interconnectivity to the Walmart entrance that comes along the side of their site. So <clears throat> those three points of access were, def were defined <coughs> back in 2005, and so we really wanted to make sure from a a global standpoint back in 2005 that there was good interconnectivity between the sites and there were logical points of access to Gallery Boulevard. So the alignment, the, the hierarchy of signage, all that kind of comes into play. One of the key pieces was that interconnectivity between the main entrance to the site and that side entrance to the Walmart, because that actually is one of Walmart's main entrances onto their site. So um, <coughs> looking at sort of the arc shape of the site, <coughs> points of access, et cetera. That's how we've kind of come up with the internal circulation plan on the property. The um, <coughs> difference I think you'll see, and you commented about the low site and how they have sort of the, the parking area that is uh, got a, sort of an outer connector, if you will. There's, if I recall correctly, there's median islands along both entrances that come down. Parking's kind of in the middle. Right. What happens with this site is you do have different retailers. We've got one retailer on the low site. And you have different retailers that are on this site. And what we tried to do in this layout was to create sort of spaces that would be logical for each of the different 
retail tenants in the space. So if you notice um, the uh, larger space on the retail D, we anticipate they would probably be ones that would have a higher parking demand. Retail A, although a larger footprint, may not have as much of a parking demand. So we tried to take all those pieces into consideration as to how people might move through the site as well. Um, but we can certainly take a look and see what options there might be for that. <coughs> I do agree with you that is a tight area, right in that area, and we've actually pulled it back substantially from the original concepts that were done on that. Well, I'm still, you know, looking at that, I'm still seeing uh, a potential uh, conflict or problem with stacking, I, <clears throat> you know, for the main entrance. Um, the, way, the way I'm looking at it, it seems like there'd be more of a free-for-all with people trying to get out as opposed to stacking. Um, but... I mean, you know more about this than I do. But do, do, you, do you see what, I, what I'm seeing? I, I understand <coughs> the area you're talking about. Yeah. Um, we see that a lot in retail. And uh, one of the things that we look to do to try to help that is we want to increase the throat depth, and that's that distance that comes back, and that's you know, sort of why we did that layout. The other piece is to incorporate signage and really try you know, to this maneuver right here is an attempt to bring people so they're stopped here and then they come out. Will you, will you have stop signs? Absolutely. Okay. That would help. And there may be potential as the applicant <coughs> takes a look at their parking needs, you know, if they can you come across, you know, potential for shared parking and maybe some reduction in the parking spaces to create more room to address your concern um, as far as spacing in there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, you have one, two, three, you have a number of movements happening, so maybe that could create some more of that throat area that uh, Ms. St. Clair is talking about. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Nick? I think my concern was, was along the same lines. It, it looked, I mean, when you come into that entrance, you have three separate ways you can go. You can take the hard left, you can kind of go straight, or you can take a right. And if I'm coming out from retail A, just above the large island, if, I'm, if I want to exit out of there, I'm <coughs> stuck in a stop sign, and I got people that might go left, might go straight, might go right, and then I got people coming from the right of me, <coughs> and people waiting on the left of me, I'm not going anywhere. I mean, that the way I see that, where as it currently sits, I, I mean, and it, it's probably hard for me to judge distance from from the scale at this point, but. It just appears that that is that is going to be problematic, and, and so if there was something you could do to look at that, maybe minim like trying to help flow, whether it's minimizing the number of options somebody has, whether or not it's making sure that the person who's queued up leaving retail A to go out isn't sitting behind, three, you know, one two people to the right, <coughs> people coming straight at them, and trying to figure out when it's their turn. It it's uh. It could, it could get get a little bit trafficy there, I can imagine, and especially if somebody decides to reverse out of their parking spot at the same time. <laughs> so, um, if you could look at that, I think that would be certainly great. Um, so that I think they've addressed most of the other comments I can see here. Um, I agree that I don't know if it's aesthetic or not, but squaring the uh, you know, running the restaurants and, and whatnot parallel to Gallery Boulevard would, would be, I think a little nicer, but that's obviously up for you guys. <laughs> that's it. All right, thank you. Susan? Um, Nancy knows that I don't know much about water retention or I know a lot about landscaping and uh, elevations and I have concerns that have to do with um, appearances and longevity <coughs> in terms of always looking good. So I want to start by saying that I really, really am impressed with the elevations. There was some work that went into this and some thought. And it, having been on the board when the original Gallery Boulevard concept came up, it's exactly what we were looking for, is that as things develop, they develop in a way that is consistent, which will take me to the two small buildings 
I don't care whether they're twisted or wherever they are. But I do think they need to come closer to Gallery Boulevard, or if not closer, you know, get rid of some of that parking that's right up against Gallery Boulevard. And if you have to pull it closer in order to do that, that's fine. My biggest concern is that for some reason that I don't understand, the small buildings, the smaller buildings that have gone up, some of them, most of them, in Gallery Boulevard, do not have that attention to architectural detail that you see in Walmart and that you see in Lowe's and that you see in your retail A, B, C, and D. So I would like to request that the restaurant and the small retail have built into it that it must architecturally blend with what you've put so much energy into for your A through D, okay? Um, the islands, are they, they're, they're traditional parking islands, right? I mean, they're bituminous and they're to keep people from bumping into each other. They're not walkways, or are they? These islands we envision, um, you mentioned about stormwater, and that's one thing I didn't talk to you folks about, was the, the stormwater on the yeah. site. Um, part of the project included a master plan for stormwater back in 2005. <coughs> and there were provisions for stormwater management that accommodated this site. There's a pond on the back side of the, the property. Big, yeah. um, and part of the site is envisioned to drain in there. It was sized and accommodates you know, the runoff from the site. <coughs> In the time frame between 2005 and 2009, when there was a, a permit issued by the DEP specific to this lot, rules changed. And so what happened was the original pieces of the, the design uh, were covered, if you will, under the original site location permit. But anything that changed from 2005 and 2009 with regard to that site design had to meet the current standards. Those standards included water quality treatment. I'm sorry, included? Water quality treatment. Okay. Thank you. So what happened um, was that the, the 2009 plan that was approved included various BMPs on the site. Grass under drain soil filters were the primary pieces of that. In addition to, there was another smaller wet pond to accompany that larger wet pond. And so as part of this plan, we envisioned that we would be having a similar approach where part of the site is going to go into the pond just as it was originally designed to, to do. And part of the site, the parking areas, would end up being treated in various best management practices, the BMPs. What I would like to, to have incorporated in there is the combination of the landscaping on the site and bioretention cells, so that we're getting a, a dual use of the, of the same land area. So that's what we're envisioning going through with the, the design process, is that treatment is, is provided in the larger, more prominent areas where we're going to be accenting the landscaping. Those would be designed landscaped areas. We would envision that probably towards the rear, maybe in the loading area, we might have some grassed under drain soil filters. So uh, these will be grassed, hopefully, uh, the, the areas that you're showing here will be grassed as opposed to impervious surface and used for water? They would be, the landscaped areas would be either <coughs> planted with shrubbery that would be as part of the um, bioretention cells, mm -hmm. or it would be grassed. Mm -hmm. Grassed. So um, the islands that you see there, we do have a sidewalk that runs longitudinally along the largest island, so we've got some pedestrian connection <coughs> from the main building to the, to the satellite buildings. Yeah, show me. Okay, so, but, but the green is not the sidewalk. The green is, no. no the green is green. Yep, and the <coughs> sidewalk is right beside it. Okay. And these would be bioretention cells or... or okay. So we incorporate, or envision incorporating a lot of the best management practices into the, the perimeter landscaping, the internal landscaping within the islands, those types of things, so that we're doing that treatment right where it comes off the pavement. That means that there may be areas that are curbed. There may be areas that there are curb breaks in order to allow that runoff to come in. Okay. Um, but we're not talking about painted, impervious islands <laughs> or yeah. anything like and that. And I was re I'm, I'm glad I asked the question because that's very important, what you just told us. I was looking for the pedestrian connector, yep. and it runs beside yes. the green space. Yep. Brilliant. Very nice. 
So one of the things I did have a question, Jay, one of your comments was to have an additional, can you tell me where you were talking about that? I'll address that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bye. Chairman. <laughs> you want to do it now? No. Well, right I'll, okay. okay. I'm almost done. <laughs> Is it okay if I? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think the questions that have been raised okay. about the parking are valid, but I think that it's hard to know from this. So I would request <coughs> you to come back. You have some kind of visual that shows me, for example, how much stacking can there be? Because I can see that I'm going to get confused. Now, I'm of an age where I get confused a little more easily than I used to, but I don't think I want to enter into a parking lot that's going to confuse me from the beginning. And it does look confusing. So if you'd make it clearer to me as to how it's going to work, I would appreciate that. Um, I think... I think that may be it for the time being. Okay, thank you. John? My turn. Uh, those entrances, the main entrance and the one from Walmart, are those like three lanes? Is that what you envision, three lanes, right, right, left turn, and an entrance? Don't envision the three lanes at the Walmart at all. Uh, that would be two lanes. Uh, they're designed to be 30 feet wide, mm -hmm. typical internal. Um, at this point, we do not have a third lane or a turn lane, if you will, on the primary entrance, but that may be something that is well, going to would, do with the that, traffic. I think that would help some of the board here as far as stacking. Mm -hmm. Obviously, some are going to make a right or left. And you're talking about truck traffic, that Walmart entrance, but it makes sense to make that a little wider so the trucks would be very more likely to take that entrance. We have sized it so the truck, it's a different maneuver there, so it, it doesn't look okay. as wide as it might be, but we have accommodated it so a truck could okay. go in. One of the things that, um, in a typical entrance, a truck is able to go both ways, mm -hmm. and in this case, that truck just needs to come out and get onto Gallery Boulevard. It wouldn't go into the loading area for Walmart. Okay. And contrary to everybody else, I don't have a problem with where the buildings are located. The rest of the buildings from... Texas Roadhouse, Kentucky Fried Chicken has parking in front, so I can't see a real need to make that <coughs> change. We're only talking one stack of cars. We're not talking, you know, three or four lanes of cars there. So I don't have an issue with that personally. And that's all I got right now. All right. Thank you. Ron? Yeah. Um, I'm going to just try and tall, tie all this together. I don't probably have too much an additional to, uh, to add. But I do have a question. And I won't hold you to it. And I've got the diagram in front of me. How many buildings do you anticipate or entities as of right now? How many new businesses? The, the plan is designed for a total of six retail spaces, five in a restaurant, I should say. There's five spaces. So, for example, one owner, retail A, one tenant. Okay, the reason why I'm stressing that is I, I look at this, the big picture, as a double-edged sword. And, and the reason why I say that is that uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, it's successful and businesses are growing and businesses are doing well in there. I, I know the existing building of businesses for all practical purposes. I don't know the spreadsheets, but appear to be doing well. Now we're going to add six new entities in there. That's going to become a shopping mall, uh, let me use the terminology, which is going to create a lot more traffic, a lot more pedestrian flow, and I think that encompasses you and sort of piecemeal, and I know the chair is going to address pedestrian, uh, you, you have uh, the job at hand to make sure we do this right. I mean, I look forward to it. I think it's great that we're seeing this kind of growth. So let me, you know, come from that direction. But it's important now that we coordinate the traffic flow, including the big tr 
tractor trailers that they have to come in there and deliver, as well as the amount of people going in and out as, as buyers, as, as our vendors or uh, salespeople or workers and so forth. There's going to be, if this thing works, a big influx of traffic there. And uh, I don't know if that road was ever intended, the main road, to handle all of that. So I, it's very important that we get this right. And then in addition to that, uh, the, the flow of pedestrians. And I would hope that we would have a network where people could carefully and safely go between building and building and building, you know, without having to dodge any, any traffic. Now, again, I'm giving you the big picture. I, mean, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes to fill in the details, but this is the way I see it. Uh, in addition to the landscaping, um, you know, I know it, it, it's a retail center for all practical purposes. Uh, I'm not looking for a forest, but, but I learned a lot from a uh, re uh, returning member at the end of the, of, of the table here that it is important that we have something that is nice looking uh, and fits the area. And then the architecture, uh, that it, it, you know, the buildings are different. And uh, I'm sure what you anticipated is going in are different. And you may have, there may be certain standards that if you get national companies going in there that require the national standards. But as you know, Nancy, we try to make the architecture, at least to the best of anybody's ability, fit the area. And so again, you get a, a, another, I mean, this, this is major in my opinion <laughs> of what's, what's being presented to us as to what's happening in that area that I don't think was ever anticipated uh, and way back when. So it, uh, it's important that, we, that this all be coordinated uh, in, a, in a way that is going to be safe uh, for everybody, <coughs> allows a good traffic flow within a, a, an area in which people are going to be happy to look at the buildings uh, with an architecture. So uh, I just want to stress, it, it, this was individually of tying all of this together. And uh, now I'll let the chair talk about. Mr. Chair, if I can, if I can just respond to a couple sure. of, the, of those items. Um, when Waterstone first contacted us, I went through with them sort of the history of the project, the <coughs> fact that there is a special architectural requirement that will need to be met in order to be consistent with the other buildings in the site. And that, that review was a very rigorous review that we had as we went through back in 2005. And so the applicant is well aware of the fact that they need to make sure that the architecture is consistent, that that was part of the original approvals of Gallery Boulevard, was that there was a unified approach to architecture, a unified approach to landscaping and signage, so that all the pieces fit together. I spent quite a bit of time talking to the landscape architect about the site and talking to him about the fact Gallery Boulevard is a tree-lined street. It was designed that way. It was not your traditional road that came into play. And the vision for that whole project was that there would be continuity, that there would be that landscaping, there would be good pedestrian access, et cetera. So as coming forward with this plan, you're right, we are the last piece in that puzzle. But we are well familiar with you know, the background and the history of that. And you know, we'll certainly, as we go through the process, endeavor to make sure that you folks are satisfied that we've met that standard as well. The other um, uh, piece on that, we talked a little bit about the hierarchy of the signage, et cetera, uh, through the program. <coughs> we also touched on a comment about traffic. This project um, had a sizable amount of off-site highway improvements that were done uh, as part of the original approval of the subdivision. Traffic projected for the project, including full development of this site, was included in that original permitting for that. So there was always a vision that this was going to be a multi-tenant retail site. Uh, so traffic numbers were accommodated in the local and the state level permitting for that. As part of our process with you and going back through the site plan process, we'll be circling back on that permit so that you folks will have the numbers and have the information for what was originally allocated and how that sort of checks in with what's out there now. So those are pieces that we're aware of. And you raise a good point that, you know, this is an important piece and it's a part to keep that program moving forward. <coughs> so we're certainly aware of that. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Ron. Okay. 
Nancy, the majority of what I want to talk about is actually a pr a pedestrian safety issues, crosswalks, et cetera. Um, but I do want to touch upon a few other things because we're very early in the project and now's the time to do some of that. Um, hopefully, as you get into your design, you think in terms of reduced parking lot lighting at night. So if there's any zoning or anything that you need to be doing um, or could do to try to help minimize some of the light used, and I'm talking about after hours, okay? And <clears throat> I always stress I'm not trying to minimize a safety concern here or get to a point where we, we cause safety issues, but if we've got an empty parking lot, we don't have as much need for lighting as we do when people are trying to get to and from uh, the building from their vehicles, <coughs> all right? But any kind of zoning that needs to be done, needs the wires need to be run up front or else you miss the opportunity. So if you can consider that, I'd appreciate it. In terms of the buildings, if people are gonna weigh in the two small retail buildings, um, I do have a preference. <coughs> and unlike John, I would like to see it closer to the street. Um, if, if that is at all possible. Um, kind of unifies the parking field a little bit and may actually save some space in terms of <coughs> turning and some of the other things that might be required. We may be able to eliminate some of the impervious area if we can do two things. Number one, move them closer and put everything more toward the middle. So that's just my thought if we can do that. Um, in terms of architecture, I don't want to get into the actual architecture short of um, in just in looking at the drawings, the, the building architecture that you gave us here, certainly, and I understand that it doesn't need to at this point, does not match the outlines of your building. So it's difficult to determine some of the actual lengths of the structures that you're showing us here. But if I did my rough math quick, um, by scaling the height of the building versus the length of the building, it appears that you've got a couple of walls that are exceeding our 100-foot design criteria for flat wall. So would you look at that and see if you can do something about that? Um, <clears throat> So now I want to talk about pedestrian safety. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I feel, and I, I'll, I'm staying on not this particular site, but the development. Um, one of the things I feel like we missed as a planning board way back when was just how we have pedestrian, pedestrians moving about other sites. And one of the ones that I'll talk about a little bit is the Walmart site. Um, at the Walmart site, there's a big, fairly good sized piece of parking on the side of the building closest to Spring Street. But if you look at that parking field, there's absolutely no way to get a cart into that parking field safely. Yes. Trust me. That's the side of the building I park on. And there's, if you have a shopping cart, you are physically in the road on incoming traffic trying to get the shopping cart around to that space. Okay? We missed it. Bad on us. Shame on us. I don't want to do that again. Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of places that I think we need to try to either add crosswalks or potentially additional sidewalks for safer pedestrian traffic. Um, first place I'll start to talk about. You've got a crosswalk that goes to the retail out of the parking field, yet we have no form of crosswalk whatsoever going to the restaurant. Nothing from the parking field across. Now I grant you, it may not go to a sidewalk, but there should be something where people feel like they can safely cross traffic flow 
on an identified crosswalk from the parking field somewhere to the restaurant. Uh, are you talking in here? Or are you talking I'm talking about the main parking field. This is the sidewalk. There's a crosswalk here. Yes. And there's a crosswalk here. Uh-huh. I'm talking about something directly in front of the restaurant. Right yes, ma'am. <clears throat> There's going to be a tremendous amount of pedestrian traffic in front of the four retail spaces A through D. Yet, physically, there is one crosswalk shown across the front into retail C from the sidewalk. So I'm assuming that if I'm parking, I'm going to be a pain here. But that sidewalk says <coughs> there's 24 spaces. If I go north, assuming north is the top of my drawing, I go into a parking field where there's 24 spaces, an island in 24 spaces. How do I get from there to the building? And I'm not asking for another sidewalk, but I'm asking for at least at the end of each one of these rows, we need some form of passageway for people identified with signage going from the parking field at the end of the rows across to these retail spaces. The bulk of our traffic is going to come, they're going to get out of their car, they're going to walk in the row, the travel lane, and they're going to come across and walk across the f what is basically the front of all the buildings into the spaces. And I think that that's a high, potentially high traffic area, and we should at least provide some kind of crosswalk for them out of those traffic fields. Typically what we do in a situation like that is... I, I appreciate typically what you do. Yep. I'm telling you what I'd like. Yeah, and no, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm offering this as, I think it might be the solution. That's, that's what I wanted to okay. explain. <laughs> um, typically when you have a retailer, they typically have their front door, and it, there's some sort of architectural projection of that. What we usually see is that along that whole front projection, that would be striped, and that would be an area that would be set aside as a pedestrian area. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just looking at how this is going to work out. I don't think your front doors are going to align with the ends of each row. I understand what you're saying, but I still either got to walk over your bioretention cells to get to the row that gets me to the crosswalk, or I have to physically walk in a travel lane in front of the buildings to get to it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'll see a more detailed drawing from you at some point that might help me understand that better. Um, at the end of retail D, as in boy, um, there's a there's a obviously there's the road that goes around to the back of the building, which is great. I will almost guarantee you that after you build your building, there's going to be a well-worn path between the end of the sidewalk in front of the buildings across to Walmart. People are not going to walk all the way down to some other way to your roadway, if you will, your entryway, to get to Walmart. If they're in that parking field and they're going to both buildings, I would love to see something that would give them pedestrian access into the Walmart parking field from your building. <clears throat> and, and I don't know where it happens. Um, I'm also going to suggest that you do a similar thing from restaurant F, and this would be in the form of crosswalks coming uh, down south to the building, to the island, if you will, that leads towards the entryway <coughs> into the Walmart parking field, that in that case you not only have um, crosswalks, but I think you also maybe should consider a sidewalk that would interconnect. So are you requesting that we bring a sidewalk along this access drive? Is that what you're... Yes. <coughs> yes. Um, that's, we'll certainly incorporate that okay. into the plan. That, that's, that's not an issue. Just to go back to the Walmart yeah. one, 
there's a retaining wall and a fence in part of that area, so we would have to look at sort of how we get people around oh. there, but we will. All right. Yeah, I didn't realize that there was a retaining wall there, so I, can, I just, people are going to go in a straight line. That's the way they move. So let's help them move safely. Um, the other thing, <clears throat> you have a sidewalk, very nice sidewalk going down behind retail E to the, to the boulevard sidewalk, which is great. You have another one at the entrance, the truck entrance. Would it be possible to have another sidewalk? And again, this depends on how you physically keep the building where you keep it. But for example, if you did <coughs> not move the restaurant, um, would it be possible to come down the parking field and get another sidewalk down a Gallery Boulevard? Or if you move the buildings closer to the road and the parking field in the back, maybe just off the sidewalk and the boulevard to the restaurant area, depending upon how you end up doing that. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if people are going to walk on the... I can tell you, I used to work in a building directly behind this development, and every day I took my life in my hands on Muzzy Road, walked down to the entrance to the boulevard, and I walked the boulevard at lunchtime. That's what I did. And if there's restaurants there, it would be great to be able to, you know, actually walk down and get to one of them. Uh, let's see. That might be... Did I hit the one you were thinking of? I believe so. It'd be hard to imagine you missed it. <laughs> uh, Nancy, while well, he's looking, my own, my that's own the point. Team, my own team is getting on me here now. That's the point I was trying to make, that this is going to become a shopping mall where people are going to want to easily, and it would behoove the developer to want to have that for people to go from store to store or restaurant to restaurant in a very safe way. And uh, what the chair is presenting, I, I, I second loud and clear, because that's the whole purpose of success for this area. It, no, and I don't know what the best would be, but I, I look at this, and, I, and again, I wonder, you've got the sidewalk going down through the parking field to Gallery Boulevard from Retail E. <coughs> <coughs> Would it be better to go down to the main entryway and it kind of like would almost match up with the crosswalk coming across from Lowe's? What? Do you know what I'm saying? I think part of that gets answered <clears throat> with a sidewalk along here. Yes. So people would have the opportunity to walk there. One of the things that we had envisioned, if you look here, this is the existing sidewalk. There's a cross in this. <coughs> crosswalk is on the Red Robin side of the entrance. Yes. Um, we had talked with staff a little bit about the potential for a bus shelter in that area. So we wanted to get people up to that bus shelter. Okay. That's why we had that connection there. Okay. Rather than putting them in the moment, coming yeah. in and out of the entrance. No, I get it. I was just trying to get that crosswalk coming across to connect almost directly. But I see what you're doing in that. I like that too. Just a little longer stroll. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Um, tee -dee -tee -dee -tee. I think those are the ones that I noticed first pass. <clears throat> I'll look again though. <laughs> we'll have more information for you to review. I appreciate that, Nancy. Appreciate your time and thank you very much. And as I mentioned, um, we're hopeful that we'll be proceeding with the uh, preload portion of it very soon. So you may see things going on out there, but that's what we're doing. So Sweet. Thank you. Our next item this evening, Sawgrass Subdivision. Star Homes, Inc. requests a preliminary subdivision review 
for a 23 lot subdivision off Sawyer Road. Mr. Chase. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, most of the board members will recall this site. We've actually reviewed this item twice uh, as a sketch plan. And as you just referenced, this is for a 23 lot residential subdivision off Sawyer Road in the VR4 Village Residential 4 District. Uh, which is within the town's growth area, one of the you know, higher density uh, zones that we have. Um, as board members will recall, a lot of the board's heavy work with regards to general design and layout have been done through our sketch plan review process. And so the board will just want to reaffirm um, that you're comfortable that the design layout sort of meets those seven uh, uh, development review standards that are spelled out in the VR4 zone, which talk about interconnected streets, open spaces, village parks, um, pedestrian connections, uh, wetlands preservation, and those sorts of elements. Again, um, you know, I think the board had done, uh, you know, the board and applicant working together had done quite a bit as far as uh, modifying the overall design layout. At this point, staff had pretty nominal comments with regards to the overall layout, given the work that had gone into it already. Um, a couple of comments we had, I, I believe the applicant is pretty well prepared to address. I will mention that um, you know you, you have received comments from Jim Wendell and Peter Tubbs, uh, engineering concerns. They had some specific concerns with regards to culvert sizing and types and inlets to the stormwater. And we were able to convene a meeting with the applicant and our engineers. It was either Wednesday or Thursday of last week. And staff, uh, and including the public works director, were very comfortable with the direction which the applicant was headed with regards to the um, revising some of those more technical details. Um, and at this point, uh, again, you know, once the applicant maybe uh, highlights or enumerates some of those items for you, should the board be comfortable, staff has prepared a preliminary uh, uh, draft motion for the board to consider if you should get to that point this evening. With that, Mr. Chair, I would turn it back to you. And I will also remind you that this is, is an item. Public comment. Thank With you very much. Comment. And we shall do that right after Mr. Thompson gives us his um, introduction. Great. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bill Thompson, BH2M Engineers, and Joe Fristacci, the applicant, is here tonight, and Walter Pelkey and Andy Morrow from BH2M, should we have any questions beyond what are asked of me. Again, we're here for Sawgrass Subdivision as a preliminary plan. Uh, 23 lots. We're in the VR4 zone, which is kind of <coughs> a unique zone, as Jay indicated. I think we've worked hard, it's, uh, just under 14 acres of land, we've worked hard to, to meet the, the goal of that zone. I think we've done, done well, and, and with the comments from the board, with two meetings earlier with you and with Jay and uh, your staff, or the town staff, I think we've accomplished a lot and got a project that uh, befits the site uh, quite well. Minimum lot size in this zone is 5,000 square feet, but our lots are either 6,300, and I guess we have a couple at 13,000. So. Joe Fristad, you want to go a little bit bigger and not push the envelope down to, to the 5,000 square feet. Um, obviously, this site will be served by public water. There is an 8-inch water line in Soya Road uh, with a hydrant right out in front of our site, and we will extend the 8-inch into our site with one new hydrant uh, located at lot 14. And that was a request of the fire chief at our meeting. We had it closer to Sawyer uh, Road, and he asked if we could move that down. Uh, to give a better better location. So the fire chief, we've met with, with him. And then the water main will loop through um, uh, the side street to Sumac Lane to, again, to serve the rest of the lots. The lots will be served by uh, public sewer. It'll be a pressure sewer. The lots will all be served out into a force main in the street in Sawgrass Drive, which will continue out to Sawyer Road. We'll go under Sawyer Road and um, install a uh, three-inch force main heading south along Sawyer Road to the uh, intersection with Imperial Lane. There is an existing sewer manhole at that point. Uh, we have met with Dave Hughes. Um, he has endorsed this design. Uh, they do have the plans and details, and we will need to go before the district, sanitary district, to get their, their approval. But that's what our design is based on, um, of their, their wishes uh, early on. <coughs> the fire chief is all set with the uh, hydrant um, location. 
was still waiting for a letter from Portland Water District. Uh, Rico Spagnardi is just really busy, I guess, and I did submit a letter to him December 10th requesting um, his review in the department of the uh, district's um, acceptance of what we're proposing. Um, so again, we're waiting for that. We don't anticipate any problem. There's a, a, a eight inch line in Sawyer Road, which uh, we believe will be able to serve this, uh, this project quite well. The two streets uh, coming off Sawyer, we have uh, Sawgrass Drive, which is about 840 feet long, uh, terminates here at the abutting property, gives that potential for any interconnection should there be any opportunity uh, to the uh, west of our project. Sumac Lane loops through. Again, the VR4 talks about a loop road, um, internal connection. Uh, we've done that, and that total loop is about 800 feet. Uh, it's a 20-foot wide road. Uh, sidewalk on one side is what we're requesting. We're asking, and we've met with Jay and staff to, to uh, see if we could do one sidewalk uh, internally uh, as a waiver, I believe. Uh, street trees, we've accommodated that uh, we'll put one street tree per lot, given the, uh, the foot <coughs> frontage. Felt two trees were, were a little bit too much. We feel the one would meet the, meet the goals of, of, the, uh, of the design. Gold Palmer did a traffic study. The traffic analysis came back with the impact fees, and there was one change on that uh, that Bill Bray picked up on. And I uh, just got the revised, I got a revised copy from our traffic engineer, but it wasn't revised, dated, and stamped. So I requested that today, and it really was a $60 differential in overall impact based on a number the town uses versus what our traffic engineer. So that's been updated by $60, and I'll get a copy to uh, Jay tomorrow on that. Again, uh, just recently we met with uh, Jim Wendell, Peter Tubbs, and uh, Jay, and went over some of the some of the details uh, in their final review. Uh, Jim Wendell's been real good in, in Jay's office also to, to get comments to us. Peter Tubbs on behalf of the town, uh, very thorough review. And some of the things that they asked, um, we wanted to lower the storm drain within the street system to better accommodate the top of the catch basins. Jim Wendell has his standard, which is a town standard. So we've lowered the storm drain uh, to accommodate that. Um, better to, to, to meet the cover uh, for highway loading. We have an existing culvert at the access point that was installed by a uh, previous owner. And that's a 72 inch uh, corrugated metal pipe, which is in really good shape. Uh, we had a lot of discussion on that just last week. Um, obviously it's not long enough to accommodate our 20 foot road with the sidewalk. So we will need an extension on it, which would be a permit to uh, DEP for, for stream, stream crossing extension. We have agreed we've got to look at um, the integrity of it as far as uh, you know, what's the gauge of it and does it meet AASHTO standards. It is in really, really good shape. I took some pictures and submitted those at our meeting that we had uh, with Jay and the uh, town engineer. We are going to re relay it and align it to better meet a straight line connection. Uh, for the stream crossing. So it just means kicking one end over. And, and Joe, we talked about that at the meeting, and that's certainly something we'd be willing to do and not have to rip the culvert out and, and replace it with, with some other type of material. So I think the consensus at that meeting was to accept the CMP, corrugated metal pipe culvert, as long as we can satisfy a couple of more <coughs> inspections, if you will, uh, to move forward. So I, I don't see, see any issues with that. Um, again, DEP will review the stream crossing. We will also review, we have two small areas of wetland impact. We talked about that early on, one at the first corner closest to me, and the other one on the beginning of Sumac Lane. Those again will be a NRPA permit tier one. In addition to that, the uh, stormwater, all the stormwater will be collected, as I talked about in these catch basin pipe systems, into a pond which is located behind lot 23, which is west of the stream. That stormwater permit, again, is a DEP uh, requirement, a DEP permit, in addition to the town approving and Jim Wendell. So we are ready to uh, submit those permits to the DEP. And obviously, we can't come back for any final approvals until those permits are in hand. We realize that. So, so again, um, as Jay indicated, we, we met just recently. Uh, Peter Tubbs had a few comments on the pond. Uh, we've increased some of the riprap and some of the issues that he com uh, commented on. 
And then Jim Wendell, uh, his letter came back with his comments on the 23rd. And in that, he said he is satisfied uh, to move this on to a preliminary approval from the engineering standpoint. So. <coughs> the other thing is uh, we've been working on an, an open space, an active, trying to, trying to utilize, we've got over eight acres of open space. Uh, the bulk of it here, obviously along the uh, detention area, small area up here, and we also have a village green space. We're looking at doing some sort of a playscape uh, equipment type, uh, and Joe Fristacci, the uh, applicant, so we'd like to meet with Jay again between now and final approval to see what what the town would like to see or what would qualify for a, a functional uh, open space uh, improvement. So we don't have anything formal tonight, um, but we do plan to uh, accommodate that area with something suitable to to allow for the the neighborhood uh, kids to to have an area with benches and in a playscape type area. So we're going to work on that. But uh, aside from that, I think we've uh, met with all the offsite departments and planners <coughs> and you folks. So uh, <coughs> we're ready to move this move this forward. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Bill. Uh, at this time, we do offer an opportunity for public comment. If there was anybody here this evening who would like to comment on this development. Please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record, and tell us what you think. I guess we're all set. So I will turn it over to the board. Would you like to start, Susan? I would. Um, I'm looking at the January 13th um, packet, and um, these things have probably been discuss but I'm going to ask anyway sure. staff review comments number two a sidewalk will be considered along Sawyer Road yes I should have talked about that a little bit more thank you um, we are proposing a sidewalk I'll flip it over. While, while he is doing that I would also like to point out to the board that the applicant is asking for a waiver from us to provide a sidewalk on only one side of the street one so side consider of the that if you would Internal. in your comment oh. period. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, we uh, at our meeting uh, that we just had this week, we've agreed to uh, construct a sidewalk along Sawyer Road on the easterly side. Presently ends at Oakdale mm -hmm. Drive, so we will. This is about 450 feet. We will construct a sidewalk with curbing. There'll be one catch basin to take the stormwater that now goes off the road, discharge it, and we'll make a connection with a painted crosswalk from our internal sidewalk here. So that is a sort of a recent agreement that okay. we uh, move forward on. Okay. Um, three, playscape, interesting word, uh, in the open space area along Sumac Drive. Is that the same thing as what it shows here as active recreation area? Yes. And explain that a little bit to me. I mean, it looks like it's on the very edges of the wetlands. Oh, it even has a little red box. Look at that. <laughs> this area is about a quarter of an acre. Uh, we were trying to pick something central uh, with a, mm -hmm. a walkway around it. Uh huh. And uh, again, with spill and stuff. Okay. So it will work in progress. But okay. Um, just basic, basic things. Right. Okay. Right. Um, under Jim Wendell's notes, number eight, he talks about the proper to propose a replacement of the existing CMP culvert. Is that the same thing as the culvert you talked about? Yes, he. So it won't be replaced. It won't be. We've we've discussed it, and as long as the quality and integrity, we're going to keep that same. Okay. Product. Okay. Sure. The paved roadway at lots 18 and 19 will allow for easier plowing on this. I don't understand how that works. Yeah, and I'm, I, if I might, that was um, an early discussion that we had with uh, the public works director as. In early iteration, they sort of had two hammerheads coming oh, in. Oh, okay. And at this point, they still have one hammerhead. One hammerhead. Um, I got you. Up there, and then. Okay. Yeah, and so that radius it. was <coughs> talked about and something that the applicant continues to work on. Um, Is that also uh, have to do with number 12? Added an additional access drive along lot 23, but do not propose a drive around the. I don't understand that either. Yeah, that, that's access into the farm. Oh. It's okay. 
You know, I'm, I'm just trying to catch up here, so. Sure. Boxes at the entrance or at each individual each house? Lot. Each individual each house lot. is going to have a mailbox. There's a lot of mailboxes. Is this a standard uh, width drive? 20 foot road. 20 foot. Yep. But, it's, but it's public. It's going to be a public road. That is okay. correct. I think that um, at this point, enough work has been done on this. At, I don't need to ask any more questions. Those are fairly obvious. I am interested, as I always am, in the um, wetland slash open space area. Um, <coughs> I actually, let's, let's, there is one concern I have. Let's, let's go to the um, stream protection, the stream setback on the open space that is along Sawyer. Yes. The um, setback. <coughs> Hmm. Is this again? <coughs> can people walk through this? I'm trying to imagine what this looks like from the road. And they can walk through here. This is very gradual. Right. Okay. And then the pond itself is, is down in here. It's down in there. No closer than 25 feet to the stream. But it'll be it's safe. Okay. It'll be that's safe that's for that's doing. Safe. Right. When it's done, it'll be safe because it would be nice. I mean, with this many lots and a very small area that abuts open space, is there any opportunity to provide an opportunity, you know, to walk around? We seem to have a question. We don't envision a lot of walking around the, the wet area itself behind the lots. No, the, no. the where they are the, on the front Yeah, I was thinking more because yeah. I'm, I don't imagine that would happen, no. But I was thinking more about where the um, Sawyer Road, where the pond's going to be. Yes. There's, it's such a small, like you said, small uh, site, and that's kind of steep, if you will. Uh, oh, it's it? not inviting for it the is, people to walk. Steep. Well, it's... That's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for opportunities. I mean, your active recreation area intrigues me. It's the village green intrigues me, and I was just wondering if there was a way to provide yet even more opportunities to use the space. But if this isn't going to work, that's fine. It's just a suggestion. Yeah. The access, it, I, I wonder if you're sort of poking at, the access from Sawyer Road is really limited to the culvert crossing because there's a stream right. that's quite steep, and you're not walking onto this site without crossing where the road crosses. Um, no, I was actually just looking for ways to provide more... More internally. ...pedestrian yep. movement around mm -hmm. what is indeed open space, and it sounds like from what you're telling me, this piece is not appropriate for that. Correct, okay. correct. But once they get in, then there's, like, like Bill said, approximately eight acres. It's flat. Uh, yep. In the well, winter time, obviously, it would be good for uh, um, cross-country skiing. Uh, our snow showing. Uh, we do envision this this play area, and this is this is something that Jay and I talked about this afternoon. Um, in lieu of a fee for uh, open space mm -hmm. uh, recreation area, recreation. we were hoping to take that contribution and make this more attractive to the residents uh, with swings, uh, not swings, but uh, some climbing area slides. Um, okay. the, we envision that these homes are going to be for first-time home buyers. Right. You know, I, I sort of figured that when I was looking at the yeah. sketch, and so, so that's what I was looking for, yeah. was as many opportunities as possible to get people out and into what is basically a lot of open space. So yeah. when you come back for final, that will be included, right? Well, uh, hopefully, yes. We're, we're, that's one of the items that we know we have to resolve. Um, but also on this open space, we hope to have community gardens. This. And in the open space? In the open space. I thought it was too wet for community gardens. No? I, think that, I think that they'll find spaces okay, there. Okay, great. I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, we envision this call. being owned by the Homeowners Association mm -hmm. uh, with, um, uh, I'm sure the town's going to want an easement in case something happens. 
uh, but we'll work with that. That's something, another item that we're working on, and we'll have that resolved when we okay. come back. But we do hope that the Homeowners Association will monitor the activities there and allow uh, activities to accommodate the residents. Where these lots are so small, we're hoping that this works that way. Because I don't remember. Mm -hmm. oh. Homeowners Association, we okay the Homeowners Association papers? We no. typically, we sometimes, we'll see a draft document, um, but it, it's been one of the, that sort of winds up falling into neither here nor there type of space. What we typically approve and can govern is a note on the plan that says what the use for the open space can be used for. Um, but then, you know, a homeowners association document really becomes a private matter as okay. far as so so the town does have a, a certain role to play um that's good. but, but that's typically really all, no, no, yep. no, no. Okay. that's really all i'm looking for <laughs> is that we get an opportunity to write something down as to what yes. it is that we like to have happen with the open space one Correct. of the notes that uh, were provided us in the review process is uh, they want the homeowners association to maintain mm -hmm. the uh, <coughs> retention area or the wet area uh, they want an easement to, for that, so that's why we're establishing the homeowners association, yeah, that has to and we're not going to limit that to uh, you know their their service or, or their um, uh, responsibilities to that area. We'll will include the open area too. Okay, so I'll look for that, that when you come back. Then, okay. thank you. I'm all I'm all set. Thank if, you. If I could Go just ahead. jump on a comment that was just made by Mr. Verstacci, and it, it has to do with the uh, open space and recreation contribution that the town has long established, wherein lots in our growth areas um, need to pay. Each lot is required to to um, pay a certain sum for. Op offsets for improvement <coughs> they need to be done to our public parks and as the applicant is suggesting he's seeking a waiver for that for the type of for the, the the recreation areas that he's proposing in his subdivision typically what the town has seen in the past and and this is you know a function of, uh, of really the VR4 this being our, our first real subdivision of this size in the VR4 the question to the board is typically what we see is uh, when we consider in lieu fees are more publicly accessible lands where there's you know maybe a little parking area or or trails that access other public lands in this instance you know the the playscape area that he's talking about isn't going to be widely available to the public it's going to be there for as i think as the applicant just suggested there'll be an easement for that tub type of public use but Obviously, its location, its proximity to community park right here may not make a lot of sense for the general public to, to attend, um, but may well alleviate and, and provide for enough recreation area for these 23 lots to alleviate sort of the, the, the um, impacts it might have on other recreation areas. And uh, one thing that I, I um, would suggest to the board, if the board's comfortable, um, in between potential whatever your next steps are I guess I'd say is I could have a conversation with our community services director or uh, community services department and get a sense from them what sort of where their comfort level would be um, since they ultimately are the ones who you know those those uh, open space and recreation contributions sort of go into their area so I guess I would Jay um, I, um, seek I would the boards I would like that's why I think I brought this up thank you for saying that is it somehow or another it needs to be in the actual I think it has to be in the actual um, final product that these areas be what they're going to where they're going to be and what they what they can be used for mm -hmm. needs to be very clear and we don't have to say whether or not other people can or can't come in if you're not providing parking the chances are pretty good I might take my cross-country skis park at the post office and walk down but that's you know my I can do that. But in the meantime, how it's going to work with community services is, I think, really important. And how it translates into maintenance with the homeowners association sounds tricky to me, but I think we need to get as close <coughs> to what we can do with it as possible, because I've seen too many situations where it's a good idea, but it just doesn't happen. So if we can't actually get it into the Homeowners Association, then I don't know how that would work, but somehow the applicant may want 
may be asked by us to actually create it as part of our um, approval. Can we do that legally? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It depends on how we do it. And that's why the important first step is to go and talk to the Community Services Department and see how our waiving of that fee is going to affect what we ask of the applicant. They have to come together, I think. Thank you for doing that, Jay. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Nick? Thank you. She was very thorough. <laughs> Appreciate the reprieve. Thank you. <laughs> I'm all set. You're all set? Ron? Yeah. Uh, Bill, again, the sidewalk is going to, what you're asking for is to build a sidewalk on your side up to where the Oakdale is. It'll be on the opposite side of the street. From where Oakdale is. We're going to cross, go up to Oakdale, and there's an existing sidewalk there now, which will match right into it. On the east side of Sawyer Road. Okay, and you'd have a crosswalk. And then we have a crosswalk, and then we have our internal sidewalk. We have a loop. On the north side here, with two crosswalks again, so people can get across safely. Okay, okay. That, that clarifies for me. Thank you. Sure. A um, couple of points that. I was reading uh, from, from staff uh, setbacks. Are we all set with setbacks? Because you had some questions, Jay, on, on uh, lot one, the 75 foot setback on that one. Is it, is it a non disturbed setback? I guess the, the, the question, um, if I might, Mr. Mazur, um, recognizing that, uh, I guess the question is, is that from the DEP, is that a 75 foot no disturbed setback, or is that to, to impact that 75 feet, which you're doing with your stormwater pond, for example, is that as simple as that property owner getting a permit by rule? Um, let me phrase this the other way. The, que the, the reason I'm asking the question is typically if we have a a hard and fast, uh, no disturbed setback that's on a property. On a property, we typically like to have another five or ten foot building setback, just to enable. Because what t what we see happens often is someone wants to put their foundation right up against that setback, and then they can't do. They wind up doing earthwork in the no disturbed area. So we try to keep just a little where you could have lawn, but it allows someone to get in and dig a foundation. So. I guess that that's the, the rationale for that question. Okay. Um, you know, I, I recognize that that 75 foot setback may be one that you know, with a permit by rule, may be, you know, relatively, uh, you know, may not be a hard and fast, no disturbed setback. So that's the, the question. Building area lot one is yep. is equal to to any of these along here. Mm -hmm. That is a no disturb, and a lot of times on these uh, no disturb buffers, we actually set uh, right. iron rods. Yep. So I think I think with the building window on lot one that Joe has looked at, he he was comfortable with that, Joe. Um, I've I've got to say it. I'm laughing as you're telling me this. Gee, small, you're killing me. <laughs> um, I looked. I I checked the width of this house. I, I'm going to be the builder. My son and I are going to be the builders on these. So um, I can answer that. Um, I understand your concern and. Looking at the width of the building envelope on this with an additional 10 feet taken from it, I can build what I want on that lot. So we can do that if that's your request, if that's, you know, uh, something that you want, we, yeah. we can accommodate that. Yeah, again, it, it yeah. really is, um, it's, we've seen it be an issue yeah, I with, even with future, or you know, future homeowners then wanting to put on a deck and they wind up disturbing that no disturb buffer and then they wind up getting in trouble with other agencies. So yeah. that's the type of. Yeah, I've done about 12, 14 subdivisions. <coughs> and we go through the rig rigorous review process. And the unfortunate part is once we leave the property, the home buyer, homeowner, doesn't care with what we did have done. All right, we try to put it in the deed when we convey um, the property. <coughs> you must get building approval before you do anything. Decks, out sheds, and all that. But they don't they don't follow along with that request. Um, and unfortunately, we can't be a policeman. You people certainly aren't police policemen and uh, the code enforcement officer. They try to, but, but it's difficult. 
So uh, we will put that in the deed that uh, the building envelope is 10 feet less. Mm -hmm. uh, do what we can to, to limit any activity outside of that. If you remember on Green Acres, we put fence posts yep. in the corners and said, no, no, you can't, you can't do anything mm -hmm. there. Uh, so far it's worked out because it's only been a year and a half, but um, I don't think that they're going to do anything. And we've told them mm -hmm. when we conveyed the property, you can't do anything there. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, I don't, I don't think we have a problem with, with uh, bringing it back in. Mm -hmm. okay. While you're at it, Bill, is there any timetable for the permits from DEP and the Army Corps? Um, I'm expecting uh, two months, 60 days. Yep. They're ready to submit now. We want to get through this meeting and hopefully get through a preliminary approval, and then DEP likes to see things at that point. Okay. Um, I think I'm all done. Okay. John? Yep. You're waiting for the Scarborough Sanitary <coughs> District. I assume you're waiting for a decision from them. Correct. Dave Hughes uh, indicated he'll set up a meeting for us to come before them. And am I correct that on a waiver, <coughs> waiver request for sidewalks, just one side, is that required? Uh, yeah. So as you may recall, the VR4, one of the standards talks about um, seeking sidewalks on two sides of the building and the language says something to the effect of unless given the scale of the development the board finds that one side <coughs> is okay then the board can waive that requirement for two sides personally okay with just the one side mm -hmm. and i'm all set thank you hey um <clears throat> pardon dave get a chance to comment i think so mm -hmm. yeah i passed oh, yeah okay i missed it um, you've already addressed my issue was uh, having crosswalks across sawgrass off the two sides of sumac. I guess I would once again ask um, that they not be painted where this is a new development, we have the opportunity to use some kind of a textured crosswalk in those areas. Um, painted sidewalks have a tendency to disappear in like three months. Black Point Road is a perfect example. We did work on Black Point Road uh, this fall, put a brand new painted crosswalk across it, and it's already disappearing. Um, if there's some way to use some kind of a texture, it has a tendency to at least be noticeable for a longer, much longer period of time. So, um, Mr. Chairman, if you're comfortable, I'll be, uh, I coordinate with the Public Works Department where, where um, ostensibly this, this will become a, or will be at least uh, offered to the town as a mm -hmm. public road um, and presumably uh, does, uh, if it's built to town standards, which they're providing to, proposing to do, will likely be accepted as a town road. I, I'd be happy to engage the public works director to get Thank his you. feedback on, on that. I would appreciate that. Excuse me. Were you uh, requesting this on uh, Sawyer, Sawyer Road? Across Sawyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. We tried to do that uh, on Green Acres, and uh, Dickie Collins said it can't be done. It's, it's not not practical to do it on an existing <coughs> roadway. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. Not across Sawyer Road. No. Okay. I'm talking within your development on the two ends of Sumax going across Sawgrass. Okay. My bad. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm not asking for across Sawyer. Okay, thank you. I am not asking. I, I didn't catch that at first. No. I, outside of your development, not asking you to do that. Inside. Okay. The only other question that I have, and I, I think we've covered a lot of things here, is, and this is just a comment that I asked staff a little bit earlier as well um, in the day, but at some point we need to have something trigger what I feel is a level of service study um, as we continue to add developments <coughs> off Sawyer Road. And my, my point of concern is the intersection of Sawyer and Goral. None of the traffic studies address that. Um, and 
while I, we can sit here and argue, well, there's only two turns, there's only three turns, there's only whatever, at some point there's going to be enough turns to say we have a level of service issue at that location. And I think we're getting close to a point where we should at least get a feeling for what will the level of service at that intersection be when your development is added. So I don't think it's going to trigger the need for a light or anything else. I'm just looking for how close are we getting? <laughs> you know, we got to throw a dart here somewhere. Susan? I, excuse me. I understand. I think I understand what you're saying, but it, it sounds to me like this is a town issue. In other words, you know, we have the impact fees for major intersections. Right. And with the kinds of rezoning that we've been doing to bring in greater density, there are probably places other than this one that, we're, that we have created the opportunity for there to need to be new areas for st to study for possible impact fees. I say with a question in my voice that this might be a long-range planning type thing because it is true. I mean, this is a, going to be a high impact in an area that we didn't expect was going to be, but then we rezoned the area and now it, now it could become such. So I think that's a wonderful um, observation. And I think that it's not going to necessarily be just here. That is very possible. I, I guess I'm just suggesting that we at least have the traffic engineers take a look at it. That's all I'm asking. Is it possible to do that? I, if, if I, I'll just provide a little bit of background as to, as to this exact question was asked um, by the applicant's traffic engineer, who's Tom Gorrell, uh, had a conversation with Bill Bray working on the town's behalf as traffic engineer, both of whom are, are quite familiar with the Gorham Road, um, stretch, the stretch of Gorham Road. Um, and Tom Gorrell was trying to set up his scope of study for, for this mm -hmm. area. And he asked that question to Bill Bray, recognizing that at Sawyer Road and Route 1, there's a stoplight. Right. Where everyone was pretty easily to agree that this would have a minimal impact <coughs> on that one. The other intersection that you're referring to, and I think you're concerned with, is the unsignalized intersection at Gorham right. Road and, and Sawyer Road. Um, it was felt by both the, by both the traffic engineers that uh, basically what our standards say is if you have a unsignalized intersection that is either at a level D or with the proposed development would go to a level D, a level of service D or lower, then the applicants would need to make some off-site improvements, be that an intersection, be that a, a, a traffic light, be that a turning lane, whatever the case may be. Um, but given the, the number, the uh, proposed the amount of movements that would be coming out of this in, out of this development to that intersection. They felt that that wasn't going to be warranted at that time. But certainly, you know, recognizing that the, the the concern goes to the planning board. This is your this is your decision. Um, and but I just wanted to give the background on why the applicant's engineer didn't supply that information um, based on that discussion. But certainly, if it's a concern of this board. Um, then that's something you're certainly within your rights to take a look at. Well, my only this. point is what, is what level is it? We don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we know. We've had multiple developments go through this neighborhood, mm -hmm. and at some point it's going to reach level D. When does that day come? That, and that's what I don't have the answer for. I'm hoping that the professionals can help help me yeah. feel better about yeah. that. And they probably can. I think what Jay said, you know, with, this, with the information they've, they've had or have now with 23 more lots, it will not go to a D. So does that mean we're at a C plus or a B minus? Or I think that information could probably be summarized from what they have now. And, and, and to be clear, I think to your point, sort of gets to what I think Susan was talking about, is trying to understand what will trigger, how, how many trips will trigger that intersection going to a level of D? I don't think we'll get that from their study. What okay. we'll get from their study is what is their impact, that the intersection now is a B, and with the three or four turning movements that they add at the AM peak, it may go to a, it'll probably stay at a B. And if that's or, the case. Or maybe that, it is a D. If but, that's the case, that's satisfying. Right. Me. 
I just, but I just want to be sure that you're clear that what, yeah. what we'll get from them is only their impacts, not sort of, okay, here's our impacts, and what would it take to get there? Uh, no, yep. no, okay, I'm, I'm fine with yep. that. My point is, is I looked at the traffic study. Mm -hmm. I saw nothing that talked about level of service at the intersection. So I don't know if it's at a, you know, two cars away, two turns away from going from a C to a D or not. That's all I'm saying. I, there was nothing that would tell me where that, in, where that particular intersection <coughs> was today and that's what I'm after. That's all I'm after. I'm not asking for, you know, tell me how many more houses we got to build or anything else. It's just a matter of are we close, are we not close, and if we're not close, fine, They're great. But go from there. I think the applicant has a question. Jay's having a hard time reading my lips. Reading his lips. <laughs> um, I'm familiar with Maple Avenue and the Gorham Road because we built on Green Acres. And if you were to compare this neighborhood to that section, that part of town, there's a lot more um, uh, traffic coming from Maple Avenue. And I don't know what that is, but that might be a good indication as to, you know, how far you have to go from some sawgrass to get to that point. I, I would agree with you, yeah. but whether it's designed for it or not, people do a very <coughs> good job at making that a three-lane intersection. Oh, yeah. All right, you can't do that on Soya. Well, uh, so you, you're probably right there. But I've, I'm a real estate broker also, and I'm talking to people about the subdivision. And we figure that probably 75% of the traffic will be going down to Route 1, um, and 25% will be going up the Gorham Road, just, just to give you... I, I appreciate that, and I did see the number of, of, of turns, et cetera, that the traffic study did show, yep. and it's minimal. I'm not arguing that. All I'm saying is, where is it today? Nobody tells me where it is today. So if it's at a level B today, fine. I'm fine with that. I'm just asking, where is it? I mean, outside of that... I, I got no problem with it. I'm good. I'm good with everything that we're doing, and, and, and you as an applicant have worked very hard with us as a board, and you, you know, you've redesigned your layout. You've taken care of you know, the issues that we've asked you to look for. I mean, I'm, I'm very <coughs> pleased with what, what has happened to this point. I just, it's just a question that I couldn't answer as I was reading down through the study. That's all. So... But I'm fine with everything else. Any other thoughts, questions, concerns? No. Seeing that the board is somewhat satisfied, you indicated you had something for me. I do, and I have added a condition. If you read right. my scratch notes about reviewing that intersection. So okay. It's an element for the board to consider as you go through. So given the general mood of the board, I'd like to make a motion to approve the preliminary subdivision plan of Star Homes, Inc. for the residential subdivision titled Sawgrass as prepared by BH2M engineers dated 113-14 with the following waivers and conditions. Waiver. Due to the scale of development and the off-site pedestrian improvements provided for on Sawyer Road, the board allows for the development of a sidewalk system on one side of the internal street network. Two. Finding no other practical alternative for creating a connected internal street network system, the board allows for 3,110 square feet of alterations to a contiguous wetland area which exceeds 15,000 square feet. Conditions. The remaining items in the planning staff comments shall be adequately addressed. The applicant shall continue to work with town staff and peer review engineer to address the requisite engineering details. And the added one is review. a review level of service at the intersection of Gorham and Sawyer Road. View of the level of service. Okay. I can read it. I could. Do we have a motion? Is there a second? I have a question. We have a second. Okay. Now we have discussion. Oh, all right. Sorry. Is the discussion that we had about the um, uh, recreation 
uh, the, the determination of what the recreation areas are going to look like need to be a condition? That's a question I'll ask staff. Sure. That that's sort of one of my comments. That's in, is. is in it's is in, in my comments. memo. Okay. So I fine. To as me, I'm comfortable that that's picking it up. If you want to add more, we certainly can. Is there any other discussion? This is not final approval. This is not it's final approval. This is it's preliminary, preliminary approval. Okay. Remembering that subdivisions are a two-step process. We have yes. preliminary and final. I I just question. Whose responsibility is that to determine the level of service? The engineer. If the board has concern, Where? it's the applicant's responsibility. And not the town. No. Correct. But it's already been done. We're just asking for the figures. Am I not correct? What they have done is they have done their traffic movement coming out of the site. They haven't done traffic counts at the intersection to determine or to um, provide evidence to this board that that intersection is not at a level service D. Again, going back to sort of what, what we had talked about previously is, um, you know, the, the town's peer review engineer has, <coughs> has indicated through staff that he's relatively confident or is confident that it's not at a level service D. If, However, there are no fixes. it's at the board's discretion. If the board is comfortable and I'm the only one that's got this concern, I, I'm not, I'm not a, I don't have enough heartburn to push this, okay? <laughs> I was just asking the question not knowing if there was an answer. I think there's a bigger, bigger issue that doesn't belong with the applicant, and that is that, you know, putting two and two together, and that is that uh, we're, we're talking about the major construction down at the gallery, and that is going to put more traffic on Gorm Road uh, when everything is said and done uh, that will create, a, you know, an, a different question. And I, but I don't think it's, again, having heard what Jay said and, and, and the applicant, I don't think it's encompassing on, on the applicant. Uh, if they're saying that it's not going to create any additional typing, uh, then I don't see where it's up to them as far as the level of service is concerned. I, I think it's more of a, a town issue in a bigger picture. Does, doesn't the town have a traffic committee? I'm sorry? Doesn't the town have a traffic committee? Yes. Well, I, we have an ad hoc. Um, I, transportation I think, committee. I that think Mr. that's Mazur where serves I think that's where this belongs. And, and again, I'm fine with that. I, I am more than willing to amend my motion to strike item three. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. The, Dave, I'm on that committee. So, well, I I move that we strike that. Well, you can't do that. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Technically, you can't do that. But I can on. I can offer an amendment. You you can suggest that. Yes, as part of your comments, you can in fact do that. <laughs> I'm being a pain here. I apologize. But, no, seriously, I, I amend my motion to strike item three, which pertains to the, the level of service at that intersection. If my second agrees. I agree. Okay. Uh -huh. Then we have an amended motion <laughs> striking that piece. So, technically, we're following all the rules. I love it. Okay. That's all I'm supposed to be making sure we're doing. <laughs> Is there any additional comments? No. No. <coughs> okay. All in favor? I show that to be unanimous. We Thank look you. forward to you coming back. We'll be back. Thank you. I would like to say to the chair, however, that the importance of your point has not been ignored. It it's a good point. It needs to be taken up, not by the uh, yeah. okay. it's, it's a very good point. It's just I don't think that I agree with Ron. It's not to be done with I have, this applicant. I have an that, additional. That is absolutely fine. <coughs> Next. Do we have an administrative amendment uh, report, Mr. Chase? Uh, I do not have anything to report. This Town meeting. planners? Yeah, I have a couple of items to note. Um, one for the planning boards, uh, just so you're all aware, 
Um, we have received a pre-application submission for what's being called the Anthony Vale Way subdivision. That's the sketch plan you saw off Sarah Liberty. It was a little three-lot subdivision. You saw a sketch plan probably back in November or December. They have submitted through a pre-application process, so I imagine you will see a formal submission. If not your me next meeting, then the March meeting, but you'll be seeing that soon. Also, like to make people aware that the town staff continues to work with our consultant and um, and communicates with our fed, uh, um, congressional delegation uh, with concerns we have with regards to the proposed FEMA flood maps. Um, those maps are available on the town's GIS web uh, on the town's website. We have a mapping service that fairly easy for people to function, but if they can't, certainly we fielded a number of calls and walk people through that process. So we're happy to continue to do that. And we do have the maps in town office as well. Um, and then more specifically to the board members, we have um, provided each of you at your uh, seat a, uh, I guess a pamphlet, I'll call it, for the Main Municipal Association Planning Board Workshop. Uh, for those members who haven't been able to attend it or haven't been in a number of years, it's certainly uh, a good education on sort of the baseline uh, legal responsibilities of the board. And we encourage you to attend. And we do, if you are interested, please let Carol or I know and we can uh, take care of the attendance fee. Um, and then we've been talking about uh, maybe holding a workshop in the coming meeting. Targeting March 10th, I have heard from one member already that March 10th won't work. Um, so I'll, I'll plan on putting out a little doodle poll or, or some type of email to folks just to sh be sure we can get um, the vast majority and we'd certainly love to get everybody. So maybe we'll look to push it towards the end of March if that still works for people. But we'll see how that plays out. Um, that is all I have at this time. All right. Thank you, Jay. Any correspondence? <coughs> Any public board comments? Yes, I have two. First of all, on a personal basis, Jay was very good in working with me since my land was confusing as far as the flood maps are concerned, and he, he took the time to go over the map and uh, uh, show me that uh, uh, I was okay. But uh, <laughs> it was close. But uh, he is. He's very patient and very good for anybody who, who is confused, and I know it can be very confusing. On a, on a different note, I sit on the tra <laughs> right on point. I sit on the transportation committee, and uh, we met uh, on the 14th. We are meeting again on the February 25th uh, to give some recommendations uh, to the council for their consideration. <coughs> I, I will say that uh, the issue that we talked about tonight, Sawyer and Gorham, uh down near the Sawyer Road. We've talked about Gorham Road from Route 1 uh, and, uh, and the problems that that uh, uh, creates as far as pedestrians are concerned. But I will at the next meeting, uh, because I think it's important and I think your point is well taken I, I, in, in, in talking about that with the increased development, including this new subdivision, uh, where are we at as far as uh, the level of service uh, on that, that corner? Uh, so I, I took a note, and uh, I will bring that up on, on behalf of the board to see what the Transportation Committee's feelings are and recommendations, and I will report back uh, at, at, after that time. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? I would like to uh, make a couple myself, if I could. I, I would once again like to welcome S Susan. I was glad to see you. You jumped right in with both feet. It was, you know, that was, it was very welcome. And my second comment to Mr. Buffard, my apologies for a terse comment there. That wasn't my intent, but I do need to act on a motion before I can accept a second one. So that's not according to Robert's rules. That's, well, then it's my bad. I thought I had to. Okay. So. so I, I, I think we got to where we wanted to go. So. All right. Right. I didn't. I didn't. I felt bad. I. Pulled you up short, so I apologize for that. You need the referee here, or what? Yeah, I think we might. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, any other comments? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. 
Any discussions? Seeing none, all in favor? I show that to be unanimous and good evening.